Now it's time to actually create our Angular app. That is, we are gonna make our own AngularJS files to have our app actually work. Right now we don't have it actually working. We have it where we have some template code, so the Angular template code with some conditionals and stuff there, but we're actually not doing a whole lot of the logic in the JavaScript code, which is where it should be. We should be doing a lot of that logic in there. Um, now, something the things that we did here, those are still useful and they still will be used in some contexts, but when it comes to making a single page, single page application, we have to start now breaking up all of our stuff into our own components. And what we saw here was called a directive. We'll actually show you how to make your own directives as well, so you can kind of play around with that. So directives are basically an improvement onto basic HTML. So, so class is a type of directive. It's an attribute of, you know, any sort of HTML tag. But when they created HTML, they didn't know that that it would be get as good as it is today. But it's still very a very core component to what. Uh, the web is all about. So what Angular does is picks up where HTML left off and just makes the HTML better by allowing us to do stuff like directives. This is an example of a directive and so would your tag be if you created something like that. And you can. We actually can create something like this that changes what's actually in there or uh, updates to what's in there much like when we use an H1 tag we know that it's for a header and we can do all sorts of stuff in there too. Um, so that's what that's another promise that Angular is really good at. But So what we need to do to get there is actually create our own Angular app. So inside of JS, we're going to make a new folder in here and we're just going to call it app. And inside of this app folder, this is where we're going to put all of our app JavaScript code. Um, we might actually separate things a little bit. We might put some more folders in. But for now, this is how we're going to do it. So let's go ahead and make a new file in here and we're gonna call it app.module.js and then I'm gonna make one other file and I'm gonna call it app.config.js. So the name app, the folder of app, is really just kind of saying the entire app is gonna be inside of this folder. The entire um, Angular app will be in this folder and then app.config.js and app.module.js is just gonna be related specifically to that app. It's not like, you don't have to call it that in particular, but it makes it a lot easier when you call it something general like this. So when you go into the future and you work on multiple projects, it's gonna be a lot easier to figure out where the app configuration is if you call it app.config.js. Um, kind of like standardizing the way it is. Now it will work if you call it something different because JavaScript works like that, um, but if you, follow something like this, it will keep you in better practice uh, long term. And that's what we would prefer to have. So in app.module.js, we're just going to type out use strict. I'll explain that later, but for now, just write it in. And we'll do angular.module. And we're going to do something in here and then put just an empty array and a semicolon. So when I say we're going to do something in here, we actually can name our app something. So we can name it anything that you want. You know, like if you were doing coding for entrepreneurs, we called it CFE. Um, if you were doing try Django, you might call it TD or try Django or something like that. This is where you name your app. And what I'm gonna just call it is try, as in try Angular. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and come back into our index file. And we're gonna say ng app now is equal to try. Cause you might be wondering, hey, can you have multiple Angular apps on one page? The chances, the, the reason you do that is odd, but you probably can because of how we're gonna be naming it. Uh, so in this case, we're naming it try, and this is it. This is a basic core thing. Once we actually start using third-party services or our own modules, we will actually be coming back to this quite a bit. So that is also true if I go ahead and copy this and go into the configuration folder, or, or excuse me, the configuration file, this is where it can configure even more stuff. So these two work in hand in hand together, but app.module.js is really just kind of declaring the module. It's saying like, this is an Angular module. We're calling it try. App.config.js just extends off of that module. And since it extends off of it, we can get rid of that, the rest of that stuff and just do dot and then press enter config. 
parentheses, and we're gonna put a function in here, just an empty function to make sure that it works, and that's it. So later, we will come back and actually run this configuration function and, and do some things to it once we get to that point, but for now, we're not at that point, so we just wanted to create the file to have it there. We go back into our index, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this old one that we had, and I'm gonna put it, this new code underneath our actual Angular code. So you wanna make sure that you're loading Angular first, and then you have your code below it or your app code below it. And we're gonna just put app in front of here. And of course, the first one was app.module.js and then app.config.js. So we save that. Everything should work fine. If I refresh in here, I see that it, nothing changed, right? So if I actually type and do some font stuff, uh, whoops, we need to write Justin, I think. There we go. And we do some font stuff. This should actually still work or parts of it will. Um, so that's pretty cool. So now that we have this, we have now declared officially our Angular module. We initialized our Angular module in our own JavaScript files. So in the next one, what we need to do is create a controller. That's something we'll do in just a moment.